Let's talk about the African butterfly fish, their care, reproduction, and all of their unique adoptions we see. This is a very unique species of fish and the only species in the Pantontidae family. The maximum size for this species would be 6 inches or 15 centimeters, and the minimum tank size to keep one would be a 25 gallon or a 75 liter. To keep a group of three or more, you need a 40 gallon breeder or 150 liter aquarium. On top of that, they have an average lifespan of five years. As for their geographic range, they are found in acidic waters in Central and Western Africa. In those areas, they're found in quiet ponds, marshes, flooded plains, and backwater streams and rivers. They're found in water that either has slow current or no current, which categorizes them as a protodroma species. These still moving areas of water typically have ample surface vegetation for them to hide in. Now let's talk about how to set up an aquarium ideal for this species. The length and width of your aquarium is far more important than the height of your aquarium. This is because due to them being surface weathers, they do not use the height of the aquarium at all. Floating plants are also ideal for this species as it will reduce light and reduce flow at the surface of the water. Now for the diet for the African butterfly fish. This species is a carnivorous one that preys mainly on insects and worms in the wild, though they'll also eat some small prawns and small fish on occasion. They eat primarily from the surface of the water, but can be found foraging on the bottom areas of the water occasionally. In aquarium conditions, they can be taught to accept flakes and pellets, but this is not guaranteed, so you cannot count on them. So make sure you have live options available for them. Now let's talk about compatibility. This is a fairly peaceful species of fish if you exclude the other surface dwellers. They are aggressive and territorial with other surface dwelling fish. They may also eat them because they are predatory fish. Because of that, they should only be kept with mid-dwelling fish or bottom-dwelling fish to avoid predation by the African butterfly fish. So while they do need to be kept as the only top-dwelling species for the safety of other fish, they'll usually ignore any species dwelling in the lower regions of the aquarium. Now for sexual dimorphism, how you can tell if they're male or female. For African butterfly fish, you can distinguish between the two from their anal fin. Females will have a normal shape fin with a flat rear edge that is not curved at all, while the rear edge of the anal fin for the males are concave and go kind of like this. This happens because the first structural ray, the support system for the fins, grows in an long fashion in males. The other sexually dimorphic trait is that females grow slightly larger and more robust compared to males. Next, we'll go over what we know about captive reproduction for the species. This species becomes sexually mature after about a year and does not show any parental care for their offspring. In fact, it's not uncommon for them to eat the eggs and the offspring. This species also does not regularly spawn in captivity and will require a spawning trigger to start it. As with most fish, a large amount of live food fed prior to this is beneficial for triggering spawning. It's also beneficial to do a very large water change, ideally 50 to 80 percent, to trigger the spawning. After spawning behavior has been triggered, the male will start incessantly chasing the female, and once she has been caught and clasped by the male between the fins, they will begin to spawn. This will occur over the course of several days, and once they lay their eggs, it is recommended to move them to another aquarium to prevent predation by the parents. This species does utilize internal fertilization, and then once they're laid, the eggs float to the top due to large oil globules in the egg. On average, they release about 80 to 200 eggs at a time, and they're only about 1.5 millimeters in diameter. As I mentioned previously, these eggs are spherical, translucent, and have large oil globules, which allow them to float on the surface of the water. And if kept at 84 degrees or 29 degrees Celsius, they will hatch in three days. Now let's go over the variety of unique adaptions seen in this amazing species. The first we will cover is the gas bladder of the African butterfly fish. The African butterfly fish has an enlarged gas bladder, which is used for buoyancy, respiration via air breathing mechanisms, and finally sound detection. For their air breathing mechanisms, they utilize a vascular wall on one side, and then oxygen is diffused in through it. Next, we'll talk about their color morphology, something you probably didn't know if you haven't seen an adult. When they're adults and mature, they are known to have a brilliant olive green hue to them, specifically in person. This is not effectively captured on camera. In photographs, they typically look black, brown, and gray, but in person, they have an olive green hue to them. This is due to light reflecting off a structural pigment called a iridophore. On top of that, since they're loosely related to arowana, they have a severely upturned mouth and teeth, which is used to capture prey items that land on the surface of the water or venture close to the surface of the water. Next, we'll talk about their unique fin morphology, which gives them the name the African butterfly fish. The most notable feature of the African butterfly fish are their large pectoral fins shaped like butterfly wings. These widespread and decorative fans are reminiscent of a butterfly 
presumably to act as a camouflage mechanism to more easily capture prey. Their dorsal fin is also very short and located very far back near their tail, instead of perpendicular to the pectoral fin. They also have a large caudal fin which aids in propelling them out of the water, though the pectoral fins do most of the work. The last unique fin morphologies are their ventral fins. These are located on the bottom of their body below the pectoral fin and they are characterized by long thread-like rays that flow below them. These long rays are structural parts of the fin which result in a thready appearance drifting below them. But because of these ventral fins, you cannot have them with fin nippers at all. Now let's talk about aerial escape, the mechanisms by which they escape predators. This species jumps out of the water by utilizing their strong pectoral fins and secondarily their caudal fin. This is due to a startle response, which is why you need to approach the tank slowly to prevent them from being startled and jumping. By using one strong flap of their pectoral fins, they're able to leap several feet away out of the water. Not only that, it is common that they do lateral flips and sometimes complete backflips. It just depends how they decide to move their body mid-air. It was thought that they once glided like a flying fish, but due to a study cited in the description, we figured out that this is not the case. They simply jump out of the water and fall back into the water. Hopefully into the water at least. But this is the main reason you need to have a tight fitting lid. They can and will jump out of the aquarium. Now let's talk about their most unique adaption, their visual system. The African butterfly fish has one of the most unique visual systems seen in this order of fish. Depending on where they're looking, they'll have different shape, size, and diameters of cones. Remember, cones are a light detecting structure located in the retina of the eye. Using these different shaped and sized cones, they're able to see out of the water, in the water, and in the air, all of which need different resolutions to be effective. A cool thing is that the subsurface visual system has a highly modified structure which forms a horizontal shelf along the eye. It goes right here, and the structure protrudes nearly to the lens of the eye. This structure divides the retina at the vital angle where refraction of light meets reflection of light. Just so you know, this critical angle is called Brewster's angle. This allows the African butterfly fish to separate different forms of vision to have the best resolution in water, air, or out of the water into the air. And that has been the profile over the African butterfly fish. I hope you enjoyed it and follow for more fish care profiles.